I bought used climbing shoes off of eBay. Uh, should you do that? Uh, that depends. Do you want to be imbued with the climbing prowess of a stranger through magical athletic osmosis? Because that might happen. More likely though, you'll first wrestle with the very idea of purchasing used climbing shoes. Then you'll second guess your choice when you investigate the shoes to uncover the hardened stains from pooled heel sweat. And then, after climbing in the shoes for a few sessions, you'll wonder if these used shoes are any better than the worn out shoes you already own. At least that's what I did. I didn't get the magical osmosis one. Aww. Here's what I learned when buying used climbing shoes online. I hope this information helps you make an informed choice. The first thing I learned is that I should try on a new pair of these shoes first. The most obvious hurdle when it comes to buying used climbing shoes online is that you can't try on the shoes before you buy them. And this is a problem because climbing shoe sizes and fits is a never ending death tunnel of confusion, ignorance, and just general misguided advice. If you've ever tried buying climbing shoes, even new ones, you'll know that you can't simply rely on your street shoe size to point you in the right shoe size direction. Climbing shoes exist in a world where sizes mean nothing. For example, my street shoe size is 10 and a half US size. Whether that's a dress shoe, a sneaker, a boot, no matter the brand, I wear a 10 and a half. Simple, easy, elegant, I love it. But because feet are so important to climbing, the shoe sizes vary widely, not just between brands, but even among brands. So I wear a 10.5 street shoe, but I wear a size 11 in La Sportiva Tarantulaces. I wear an 11.5 in Evolve Kronos, which I can't picture here because they were stolen from me. And I wear a 12.5 in Evolve Shamans and Evolve Phantoms. So even among the same brand, my shoe size differs by a full size. Now this is partly because I have disgustingly long toes, uh, so my feet don't really play well with the aggressive downturn of shamans and phantoms, but that's kind of my point. Your feet are uniquely shaped, so you must verify that the used shoes you are buying actually fit. I mean, this is good advice for new shoes too, but this is a video about used shoes. Of course, you can't try on the actual shoes you'll be buying online, but you should seek out a new pair of those same shoes to try on. I had been eyeing a pair of Evolve Phantoms for a while. Every so often, I'd go to my local REI and step into a pair, smile as I dream about all the sends I'm gonna send. Then I'll glance down at the price tag and realize that my dreams aren't worth $209. But the important thing is, I know the size of Evolve Phantoms that I fit into. I should mention, I alluded to this earlier, uh, I do suffer an extra layer of hesitation when buying used shoes. Uh, take a quick journey with me. Ah, here we go. I was, I was a, I'm doing a literal journey, I didn't realize I'd be doing that. Anyway, earlier I mentioned that my Evolve Kronos were stolen. At the time, I tried convincing myself that the thieves wasted their time thieving because they wouldn't be able to resell those shoes anyway. They won't make any money off of them because nobody is going to buy used climbing shoes. Given how particular climbers tend to be, with regards to shoe fit, of course, finding the perfect foot to offload a pair of stolen climbing shoes can't be easy. It just wouldn't be worth the thieves' time. But here I am, doing the thing that I convinced myself wouldn't be done by any sane climber. Well, if someone did buy my stolen shoes, I hope they are working out for that person. Of course, maybe the shoes I'm buying online are stolen. I don't, I don't want to think about that. Journey over. So when my shoes finally arrived in the mail, was I worried about what I'd see when I opened the box? No, I wasn't, because I studied those listing photos like a hawk who's into photography. That's tip number two when buying used climbing shoes online. If the photos of the shoes aren't good, then run away. Do not buy. Overall, the condition of my shoes that I bought were great. I made sure that the auction listing contained some good close-up photos. If the auction listing lacks close-up photos, then move on. The seller should be willing to show you all the areas where shoes tend to wear, especially the heels, toes, and edges. Be cautious of a used climbing shoe listing that lacks photos from these angles. And if you don't see a photo of a part of the shoe you want to see, message the seller. And if the seller refuses to update their photo gallery with your request, then congratulations, you just avoided making a big mistake by buying those shoes. 
Climbers should care about other climbers. And if a climber is selling their used shoes, they should want to make sure that the person that they're selling them to is making an informed decision, especially considering that shoes are essentially a piece of safety gear. Tip number three, accept a bit of grossness. You'd better be cool with your own sweat and mixing with the dead sweat of a stranger. Like, really, you've got to be cool with it, okay? Most climbers don't wear socks. And I'm going to guess that most people haven't ever raw dogged a stranger's shoes, so just trust me here, it feels weird. Alright, germaphobes, take heed. Maybe buy some disinfectant and prep for your new used package. And if you can't find disinfectant, I don't know, maybe ease yourself into the comfort of gross sweat by dunking your foot in the toilet. I've now had a few days to climb with my used climbing shoes. Was the purchase worth it? Overall, yeah, the cost of these shoes was a quarter the cost of new shoes. And the quality of the shoes matches the listing photos and perhaps best of all, used shoes come already broken in. If you've ever bought new climbing shoes, you know that the first several weeks can be painful. New shoes are rigid, they're rough, they're stiff. Only wearing them for many climbing sessions will make them comfortable. Now there's lots of tips out there on the internet to break your shoes in faster. You can soak them in water, take a shower with them, put them over a fire, uh, put them in the freezer. Uh, none of these things worked particularly well for me and believe me, I've tried all of them. So I'm gonna say don't trust those things and really just rely on the fact that you have to wear your shoes a lot for them to actually get broken in. And I will say that not having to break in new shoes is really, really, really nice. Have you ever bought used climbing shoes? How was your experience? Tell me in the comments below. And after that, watch another one of my videos, will you? They are pretty great. I mean, some of them are pretty old, but that's okay. Used things are awesome. We determined that in this video. Were you not paying attention? 